Hey guys, welcome to this introductory video on rational expressions. So in this video, we're going to talk about what are they and then also how do you simplify them. By the way, I highly recommend that you pause and try the examples when prompted. And there are free guided notes available that I think really make watching this video a little bit more engaging personally. So let's start off by just talking about what are rational expressions. Well, these are expressions of the form p of x over q of x, where these are both polynomials. If you forgot what that is, don't worry about it. I'll show you in a second. And the q of x, so the thing in the denominator, can't be zero. And that, that's always the case with fractions. You can't have zero in the denominator. OK, so probably the, the easiest way to really explain this, though, is to just show you what do these look like. So I have two examples here. So we've got polynomials. Um, so polynomials, they have uh, whatever variables that you want, but they have to have whole number positive exponents. So you can see here, so 3x plus 2, 7x squared plus 3x minus 1. So those are all whole number um, exponents. And then even just a singular number can be a polynomial. That's totally fine. And these numbers can be anything that you want. You could, you could actually have this be like 7, 7 pi over x cubed plus 1. Totally doesn't matter what the number is. The only thing that, that, it, that does matter is that this is a positive number here, if that makes sense. So these are fractional polynomials, I guess, in some ways. All right, so let's talk about how do you simplify these. Well, if you have a rational expression that needs to be simplified, you just cancel out common terms like you would with fractions. Though you might have to factor, and we're going to break all of that down in the rest of this video. So just to show you like a, a theoretical version of what I'm talking about here. So let's say that I have determined that, you know, my polynomial can be factored as r of x times p of x over r of x times q of x. So I feel like without really telling you, if I just asked you to simplify this, you would just look at this and say, oh, well, just cancel out those r of x's, right? And then I'd be left with p of x over q of x. That's basically the idea behind this. And so I'm going to just show you kind of all the different flavors you can get with this. So let's start with a, a really basic version of this. So this is still a polynomial. You can have x and y's. And you don't necessarily have to have more than one term. So this is a monomial over a monomial. OK, so just by looking at this, you probably notice 25 over 15. I can divide the top and bottom both by 5, right? So I'm going to do this in pieces. And maybe you just kind of want to watch it for a second and then decide what you want to write down after we've taken a second to digest this. OK, so this is going to leave me with 5x to the 7th, y to the 9th. And then the bottom, this will be 3x to the 3rd, y squared over z to the 7th. OK, so now we need to think back to our good old days of exponent rules. And so what you'll notice here, so I've got x to the 7th over x to the 3rd. So what I can do is I can subtract the 3 from the top. And I can do the same thing with the y's too. So I've got y to the 9th over y squared. So I can do that same thing. I can subtract the 2 and cancel that out entirely. So in this case, my final answer would be 5x to the 4th, y to the 7th over 3z to the 7th. And so then that would be the, the simplified form of this. OK, so like I said, this is just kind of the, the starting point. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video here, give these two a try, make sure that you feel okay with this, and then I'll show you the answers. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to go in pieces here once again. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the top and bottom by 7. So this is going to give me 3x to the 7th, y to the 9th over 2. Um, I'm going to write y to the 8th over here and z to the 3rd. So I just rewrote this just to, like, so I could see that the y's are on top of one another. So the other thing that I can do here is I can cancel out this y to the eighth and just subtract it from this exponent up here. So my final answer will be 3x to the seventh over 3x to the seventh y over 2z to the third. And then that would be the most simplified form. OK, so for c here, so now what you might notice is so 16 and 15, those actually have no common factors. So I can't divide anything to the top and bottom. And sometimes that happens, and that's OK. And then as far as the exponents go, so we just want to be a little careful about this. So, OK, notice I've got x to the fourth over x to the third. There are more x's on top. So I can do that same little trick I had before. So I'll subtract off the 3, like so. And then the same thing happens with the y's. I've got y to the seventh over y to the fourth. So once again, I can subtract off that 4 and cancel this out. 
But, but there's a little bit of a twist here. I've got z to the third over z to the eighth. So notice there are actually more z's on the bottom in this case than on the top. So when that happens, there's a little shortcut that you can take. So you just have to notice where are there more of that, that variable or that, that letter. So when that happens, I'm actually going to have my z's end up in the bottom and I'm going to reverse the subtraction. So in this case, I'm going to subtract off the three and cancel that out. See what I did? And so now my final answer will be 16x y to the third over 15z to the fifth. So just something to keep you on your toes. So now I want to pivot to uh, kind of what I was referring to earlier. So sometimes when you have rational expressions, you have to factor. And you're going to find that that's kind of the theme when you work with rational expressions. When in, when in doubt, you probably have to factor. So notice the top and bottom, both of these can be factored. So x cubed plus 5x plus 6, that factors as x plus 3 times x plus 2. And then in the, the denominator, so x squared minus 9, this will factor as x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then, hey, look at that. That looks just like what we were talking about earlier, right? So these x plus 3s can be canceled out. So my final answer would be x plus 2 over x minus 3. And so there's the idea behind that. So what I want you to do now is I've just given you a couple more examples like this. So I would highly recommend that you pause the video here, give these three a try, hit play when you are ready to see the solution. So starting with b here, so as I factor this, so the top will factor as x plus 5 and x plus 2, and the bottom will factor as x plus 5 times x plus 5. So now I can cancel out one of those factors of x plus 5, so my answer here will just be x plus 2 over x plus 5. Okay, so for b here, or so the c, so this will factor as x minus 3 times x plus 2 on the top. So double check that you got your signs right with that. And then in the denominator, so let's see, this will be x minus 7 and x minus 2. Well darn. <laughs> so you can't go any farther with this. So there's nothing that we can cancel out. You might say, oh, I've got the, the 2 and the 2. But these are different signs. So this is actually already simplified. This is already simplified. And uh, okay then, I guess we, we did all that work for nothing. It happens, you know? <laughs> okay, so moving on to D here. So now I've got x squared plus 10x plus 16 over x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus 2. Okay, so the top part, how does that factor? That factors as x plus 8 times x plus 2. Now, in the denominator, so notice that we've got four terms. So a lot of times when you have four terms, often you will use grouping. So let's give that a try. So in the first two terms, notice I could factor out x squared. And if I factor out x squared, I'll be left with x plus 2. And then out of the second two terms, so there's nothing for me to factor out. So I'm just going to write a 1 here and then write this, this uh, x plus 2 again. And so now you can see from looking at this, right, so the x plus 2 and the x plus 2, those, those will factor out. So the way that this whole thing factors is, let's see, this is x squared plus 1 and then x plus 2. So there's my whole factorization. And now I can cancel out those x plus 2s. So in this case, my simplified answer would be x plus 8 over x squared plus 1. Okay, so if you feel like you've got it, you, you can stop here. But if you would like to just practice a little bit more, I have created two more examples with slightly trickier factoring. So these are like good challenge problems if you want to stick around and try these two. Give them a go, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so for A here, this top part requires that we use the difference of cubes. So I just went ahead and, and wrote that formula out for you. And okay, so I have a whole video also on how to work with the difference of cubes. So if you have never seen that before, if you like that's coming out of left field, feel free to look up my video on, on working with that. It's, it's kind of just like a formula that you kind of have to just be used to working with. So anyways, so the top then is going to factor as x minus 2 x squared plus 2x plus 4. There's the top. And then in the denominator, this will be x minus 2 and x minus 7. And so those x minus 2s, those will cancel out. So now I'm left with x squared plus 2x 
plus 4 over x minus 7. Okay, and so for b, so once again, we've got a little bit of funky factoring here. So notice in the top, I've got a GCF on top here, so it looks like 5x cubed can be factored out. So that's going to leave me with 2 plus 3x to the fourth, okay? And now, let's see what's in the denominator. So in the denominator, I can factor out, looks like 10x, which will leave me with um, x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay, so now to finish factoring this, this one might, you know, make you kind of nervous because you see like, oh, there's all these terms, so this must factor in a really crazy way. So when I look at this, I notice that I can divide the top and bottom both by 5. So I can divide the top and bottom both by 5. And then notice I've got more x's on top than on bottom, so this x cubed, I can subtract off this, this one power of x, so I can subtract that off there. So I can do that, and then I can also factor this guy here. So let, let's just see where we're at. So this becomes x squared, right, because 5 divided by 5 is just 1, so this will just leave me with x squared. And then this is 2 plus 3x to the fourth over 2x plus 2 times x plus 2. Now, you, you might have been like in that mode of like, oh, I, I've got to cancel something out. But actually, we, we couldn't here, like as far as factoring goes. So we did all the cancellations that we could. We can't cancel out any other factors. So for this particular one, that's actually as much as we can simplify. So we're done. And so that covers it for this lesson, guys. So hopefully that was helpful. Helpful, helpful. Uh, if you found this video useful, consider giving it a like or subscribing to my channel. And otherwise, hopefully I'll see you guys in another video.